Good evening. I'm Drago and this is Chilling. Now, if you're tuning into this program, you're doing a fantastic job. Keep on following our socials. Go on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. That's Chilling UBC TV. The more subscribers we have, the more smile you put on my face. Now, today, I have brought for you a prolific, a big man, quite daunting at some time, and he also speaks out politically and is quite a vocal person. He profiles himself as a social activist, an entrepreneur, a father of two daughters, a businessman, and a lot of things. I'm going to get uh, the meat and the juice out of this gentleman. On Twitter and other social sites, Frank Malingo Mogashumba profiled himself as a social activist, motivational speaker, and entrepreneur, whose purpose in life is driven by Mahatma Gandhi's quote, I believe in self-empowerment and be the change you want to see in the world. His life is masked with controversies but avidly admired by many, not considering that there are times left guessing who the real Geshumba is. Born on December 3, 1974 in Villa Maria, Masaka District, Gashumba is a single father of two daughters and is a Ugandan of Rwandan origin. He attended St. Francis Primary School in Masaka before moving to Aga Khan Secondary School. In 1996, he graduated from Okumba University where he attained a bachelor's degree in business administration. He spent much of his early life in Masaka before moving to Kampala in the early 90s where he cut into Kampala's Masaka clique, famous for its success stories. So fascinated to introduce to you Mr. Gashumba. Yes, how are you? Welcome to my show. Mm, you're well? I'm well. You, you, it's your show you own, UBC. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just own this space and this uh, platform. Oh. I have a huge influx of youths that tune in every week uh -huh. to expect a good personality. Uh -huh. And uh, I must say you're one of them. This is quite a good space. Uh -huh. And the first thing that captured my attention when I got it uh -huh. is the artwork. Mm -hmm. on the walls. Mm. What do this artwork mean to you? What do you, you have to tell me exactly? Of course, the, uh, the, the great Felix Kawesi. Felix Kawesi, we hail from the same area. Really? Masaka? Yes. He was murdered, so the only present I can give him is to hang his pick here. Okay. Yes. We should develop a culture of having our own heroes. Mm. Why would I have a pick in, in my office that, that does not inspire me? Kawes hails from a poor family, or he hailed from a poor family, from a poor family to becoming to an I, becoming an IGP. Mm. So that's why he's there. Pope Francis, I'm a Catholic. Yeah. The Catholic Church has existed for the last two thousand years. Mm. That's why he's there. And speaking about your religious background, mm. is it so thick? Are you quite a religious? Person? I think I'm a Christian, a good Christian. Mm. If there is heaven, I'll be in heaven, because okay. privately I relate to God. Mm. I rarely go to church, but I'm a good Christian. Do you follow these pastors? No, we have uh, nowadays I don't think I'm stupid teaching? to follow pastors. Mm. I follow Jesus. Okay. Yeah. My relationship with you is with Jesus, mm. not pastors. The great Bob Marley. Yeah, Bob Marley, when you listen to Bob Marley's songs, they inspire us to believe in ourselves. That, this, that the destiny of Africans will be written by Africans. And who is that, Sankara? Sankara. Thomas an, Sankara, I think an activist. I, no, no, no. That man was a president for Burkina Faso. Yes, I know that. And he was murdered. So he is one of the few guys that really also believed in Africa. It's quite making a pattern. He was murdered. He was murdered too. Yes. <laughs> and surprisingly, serious people end up being murdered before the age of forty. Even Jesus was murdered. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> up there is President Paul Kagame. He's the president of, course, of Rwanda. Yes. Idi Amin down here at the bottom. Yeah, Idi Amin Dada, we are here because of Idi Amin Dada. Yes. No, you may disagree with Idi Amin Dada, but to me, I believe he did a good work for this country. Really? Yes. And Those who Idi Amin have not read the history of Uganda. The extreme bottom. That's the late uh, Fred Rejema. Rwandan. He started the war to liberate Rwanda. Mm. And three days into the battle, he was shot dead. Of course, no doubt, Barack Obama. Mm. Barack Obama inspired us to believe in ourselves, that no matter where you come from, you can always make it. A black man from nowhere becoming the first US president. Mm. So to me, 
I think it was in 2008. I remember waking up every morning to pray for Barack Obama to become a U.S. president. Why? Because if if, a Barack, if, if Barack Obama will become a U.S. president, I can also be what I want to be. He inspired us that there is nothing impossible. What? Mm -hmm. And then Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa. If you believe in giving back to the poor or to the needy, mm. that's that's Mother Teresa. Then the last one, the Nelson Christ, Mandela. Mandela. Who doesn't know Nelson Mandela? Africa's number one. 27 years in jail, served one term, and he gave up power. What's your fascination, what's, what's your fascination with uh, the Mahatma Gandhi quote? Yeah, Gandhi, you know Gandhi believed in non-violent means of having a change you want. That's Mahatma Gandhi. And when you look at Mandela, actually the Mandelas, the last option of using arms, it was out of their mind that, you know what, no matter what we do, we can't change a government in South Africa. So they launched the, the military wing. And what I call those days, some of their soldiers were being trained in Uganda. So the people I look at, there is an element of hope, giving back to the needy. That's it. I, I cannot hang a pick here unless there's a reason. These are icons. Yes, these are the people I look at mm. every day. Is that why I also, because you talked about non-violence, is that why I also see Martin Luther King yes, somewhere outside yes. there? Actually, Barack Obama is a product of Luther King. I saw that, and that's yeah. great art. Yes. Who, who did that art? A young boy, a young boy. A young boy did that for me. So when you look at Luther King, I see Barack Obama. Let's go back. Mm. When you were a child, mm. what kind of family do you come from? I hail, f I hail from, a, from, a, from a place called Vila Maria, that's in the Masaka district. I think 84 miles out of Kampala. I was raised from uh, these ordinary families. That's it, like any other young boy. Mm. Mm. You got all the love and, uh, from your parents? No, no, no. I don't call ever seeing love from my father. Our father was uh, a certified dictator. There was no love. <laughs> what happened? I don't recall ever hearing my dad saying hello to me. No. Why? Were, that was him. That was his character. So what do you do? The, only, the small love that is in, in us, it's from our mother. Mm. Mm. So your mother's child. Yes. I understand. Mm. And uh, were you the kind of a rebellious child? Were you the smartest no, one no, no. in class? Those days, I don't, I don't think you could even rebel. The word, our parents, their word was the law. And when you interact with the friends who are from Kabar, who are from Barada, from mm. Jinja, they will tell you the same. Those who were born early 1970s, yeah. their parents were tough. There was no conversations with, with parents. They would tell you, do this, and that's it. He would tell you, I'm going to cane you 20 strokes, and it has to be you to go and get the stick. Because it. nowadays, it's like things have made a, 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 an awkward turn. Okay, it's not awkward, but mm. things are, are more settled. I mean, you can sit with your, your children and you No, the discuss. question would be, mm. if we are sitting with, their ch with our children, are we producing the best? Maybe because I think if you have a great relationship with your kid and you discuss it and everything. No, we've they, given children creates... unlimited liberty and we are going to pay a price. When you give children unlimited liberty, you pay a price. Children don't need democracy. Children don't need rights. Children need medication, school fees, health and the rest. When you give children liberties, you're going to pay a price. That's why I see many of them flocking bars day and night. Mm -hmm. because you're giving them freedom and actually when you read people that have really made it even in Uganda when you look at their background it's the same tough hand what kind of lessons that were instilled in you by your parents what are some of those lessons my mama when I look at my mom it's for her I think you it's talk about uh, your mother you spend more time with her <laughs> she's still there she's around she's still alive my dad too is still around yeah so I was telling you, my mother, the little love you see in us, it's from her. My dad, there's no democracy. To my dad, it was about toughness. He was telling us that, that the world has never been a holiday. Maybe that was the lesson. That you, you, go, you must go out and hustle. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So would you say that's one of the lessons you got? Yes, yes, yes. And, I, and another lesson would be, was tell, that we are like 40, my dad. He was very good at networking. Mm -hmm. You know, he was very good in doing business. 
So every town he would go, he would get a woman from there. And everything he tells us day from morning, never have, never, you, you can roam like, like a dog. But if you are to marry, it has to be one woman. Mm. Yeah. And uh, speaking about the business aspect, mm. you're a certified businessman. Yeah, what I know with my dad, yes. what I know with my dad, uh, because I remember we grew up seeing cars at home. Yes. Small cars, trucks, would buy coffee from every part of Uganda. And uh, our dad owned uh, coffee, coffee plantations, or uh, and he would tell us that I'm done with you're done with picking my coffee. The rest is yours. Mm. You'd pick it, sell it off. Mm. And our dad, it was very simple. Everyone must have something that brings money at home. That was him. So this culture of hard work. I think it's from our grandparents. Because speaking of that, I interviewed Mr. Baria Morela. Mm. He also told me the same thing. Mm. There was that aspect that parents of then, mm. I, I think it's gold now. No, we, it's we, gone. It's gold, it's gold now. What they used to do, mm. they used to um, enforce these yeah, sort now, of now targets you, if on, you do on it their today, children. Yeah. This, right, any girls to do with the rights of children, they will come up to say, that's you are suffocating the rights of children so if children work at home then you are suffocating their rights mm. we would look after cows during holidays we would milk cows i know how to milk a cow how many young boys or young girls can milk a cow in Kampala? i'm sure they are and you don't blame children we should be blaming we parents mm. children are not the problem it's with the parents they bring we are not giving them the right framework for the future which kind of schools did you go to, Mr. Gashon? I went through these ordinary public primary schools, Villa Maria, St. Francis Primary School, Aga Khan, St. Secondary School, and Nkumba. No, okay. I don't call it about going to an, to an international school or King's College would do. Those were schools for the, for, for the reserve. Yeah. Even if you got a four, I think there was no opportunity of going there. But I don't remember getting a four. Mm. Just, You're saying your... You're not that smart. No, I don't think uh, that's the, there's a big difference between in being intelligent and smart. Yeah. And there's big there's a big difference between knowledge and education. Being smart backs you up mm -hmm. even out of school. Yeah, you ra rather be street smart than school smart. Because at the end of the day, you're going to leave the school and come to the streets of Kampala. That's where we know where men are. Uh, the streets of Kampala, we distinguish between the lions and rabbits. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You may be you may be you may be smart in school, but what happens after school? Survival for the fittest. Students that, that were giving us hard time in school are nowhere. Those who are number, <laughs> number ten, they are nowhere. They are nowhere. And if if I can tell, even take you back, mm. you, when you look at these billionaires in Kampala, show me one billionaire who has a master's degree or a PhD. No. Look at the presence of Uganda. The presence of Uganda. I mean, he, was, he stopped in P3. He ruled Uganda for nine, day, mm, nine, nine years. Milton Obote, two terms, mm. eight years. Professor Rule, a professor, 62 <laughs> days. <laughs> Bina Isa, a lawyer, I think yeah. 92 days. Yes. Museveni has never graduated. Show me a peak Museveni graduating. 33 years and he's still counting. So it's about knowledge, being smart. How to maneuver, how do I maneuver? You must know how to swim, how to jump, how to fly. That's it. And, and it's lacking in our schools in Uganda. By that time you finished university, did you sort of have targets? No, no one should tell you that. But what I recall, after school I made a resolution not, not going back to Masaka. Then I rented like a small Muzigo around, around in Tebe Road. You see where Freedom City is? Yes. That's where I lived first, in Akazigo. I remember for two months I was sleeping on my on my mattress on the floor. So that so when I see you, when I see these younger boys, I hear slaying or young girls. I look at them and it's the age disturbing them, but the real world is coming in. Mm. Mm. So don't you think that decision you made of not going back mm. home mm. shaped you somehow? Yeah, but we are told from day one. Our daddy told us the moment you are done with the school, you don't have to come back here unless you're a lady. It was, it was. It was a rule. A boy, you are done with the school, go to the world. For, for girls, it was exceptional. Girls were allowed to go back to school. The moment you are done with the school, 
go and hustle. Mm. Because our dad used to tell us that he, he does not recall ever going to the schools he went through, but he managed to raise us. You are done with school, what are you doing in his, in his compound? That's it. That's, the, that's when the real hustle started from. So how, speaking about the real hustles, mm. take me through all the shebang. Mm. What really were you getting your hands in by that Because time? I remember when mm. my first job I worked with the, with, the Bazung, with the Bazungus, they had an office at Colin House. What was it about? It was about helping them around, the, the, the were Americans in Eno Kampala. So my duty was to take them around if they needed something to ask me to look for it. Then time came when they had to go back to to US. Mm. So I had then I had to switch to go to Congo. I started doing some business from Congo. Mm. Mm. So again it takes us back that are we preparing our children to be the best? Are we preparing our children to survive no matter what the world is? When did uh, this bubbly character of yours mm. get unleashed? I mean you being so outspoken and the so government of Uganda, the, the regime in Uganda it's, <laughs> If you meet the students I went, uh, if you meet my OBs, my OGs, they won't even tell you the, the Gashumba they see today. I was always a very reserved person. But the circumstances we are going through are forcing us to speak out. Yeah, what we see on radio, sorry, what we listen to on radio, on TV. Yes. You feel there is someone who must speak out and no one is speaking out. You find yourself out. You find yourself acting like a politician acting like a, a, a lawyer for the voiceless. Yes. Mm. Wow. You're getting Because wow. I remember the only position that I've ever held, it was in Nkumba, I was the Minister for Transport. But from primary to senior six, no position. Mm. Mm. Uh, do you have any aspirations right? of, of running for office, no. public service? I want to join the one... Because one, you have a huge following. Yes, I... Yes, but I want to join the group of one point, the one point five percent of the Asians who run this country. Do you know that the economy of Uganda is run by one point five percent Asians? Yes, the Madivanis, the Metas, the Mukwano, the Sudiris. They pay sixty-five percent of the taxes, but they control the budget, they control the cabinet, and they control the parliament. Don't you think that has to do with longevity? Mm -hmm. How much they have spent doing that? It's a generational thing. Yes. Yeah. So what, what I mean, you, you don't have to be a politician to impact lives. That's the mistake you people make. If you, if, if you want to make money, you have to, unless you're a crook, you can't make money out mm. of politics. Mm. You can't. There's no money in, the, in, in parliament. These are poor, poor boys in parliament. Mm. There's no money. They pay them, okay, okay, 25 million a, a month. But do you know how many beggars go to their homes every day? Sometimes I sympathize with these MPs because some of them are my friends. You are seated with an MP for 10 minutes, he has received over 100 calls. And every call, he's a beggar, requesting for money. My child has not gone to school, I have to go for value, blah, 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 blah. So I cannot be part of that. I don't see myself in politics. We're going to take a break, and when we return, the big man, Mr. Gashumba Frank, is still here with me. Don't go anywhere. Thank you very I much for to... staying glued on this program. As I mentioned before, I, I have... the chilling. Yeah, chilling. I have a but very... But do the youth in Uganda chill? Or they pretend? They, they do chill. No they, way. They do chill. <laughs> the kind of chilling that you don't recommend, the one of going in bars. Uh, where do you guys get money? Drinking Monday to Sunday? I don't know. I don't know. Where do you guys get money? You, you never, as a child, you never used to go to these clubs. As a youth growing up, let me honest. tell you, mm. my biggest disappointment is the way our youth live in Uganda now. From Nyonyo to Nigeria, from Nigeria to Boyogere, from Boyogere to Arua, they drink Monday to Monday. What are you celebrating? And the youth from these posh families, the Mukwanos, the Madivanis, the, Mur the Murwanas, you can't see them. The but the youth from them. these poor backgrounds, mm. you won't believe it. Don't you think it's about excitement? No, 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 no. It's, it's taking us back to we, with the parents. Look at all these bars in Kampala now. All these bars in Kampala, posh bars are owned by Eritreans. Eritreans who walked from Eritrea to North Sudan, boarded buses to South Sudan up to Kampala, and they set up bars. And who is drinking Monday to Friday, Monday to Monday? Our youth. And who owns those buildings where these bars are? Asians. 
And it's you people saying every day that there's no money in Uganda. There's money in Uganda, mm. but our priorities. Even the approach is wrong, I think. So it's unbelievable. Mm. So you uh, belong to 25 WhatsApp groups and you have no job? 25 WhatsApp groups? But you know each and every happening by in Kampala. You know when a comedian is launching, you know, well, you know which comedian is launching, but you won't even know that there's a, an advertisement in newspapers. And I know many organizations in Uganda that give out jobs strictly on merit. Mm. If you did ask the youth in Uganda, when do you last read a new vision or monitor to look for, for an advert for a job? Mm. They, they, say, they are no jobs. And I know friends who got jobs in UNRWA, in URA, in American Embassy, through adv adverts in newspapers. <laughs> because they will say to this on what I you know some of them are non-great readers. <laughs> they are if you're not a great readers, reader, you're a great fool. They are not great readers. They if don't you don't read, read what, what, how are you going to disperse information? There are young men that are trying to be innovative. Like? I, I mean, there is a, a number at least. They are actually, it's, it's that are starting out. not young men. It's yeah. different now. Actually, girls are more innovative than boys now. How is that? That's why we're seeing a generation of idiots. Boys who believe that it must be women to fund them. How? It's happening now. These batiks you see now in Kampala, it's young girls. If you go on the social media and see blogs to do with the business, it's ladies, young girls. And when, if you see boys who are, who are scavengers, you'll be shocked. Mm. Our days, it has to be a man to support your girlfriend. But now it's the other way around. It's taking us to mommy's boy. There's a generation of mommy's boy. I don't understand why it's like that. Yes. Actually, if, if, you, if you checked mm. MTN, AfriCell, Airtel, who borrows money from MTN, Airtel, AfriCell, chances are 80% boys. But it's, it's called it to a wole. You'll be shocked. To go and drink. Yes, food. these young girls are interacting with the girls every day. They are ready to hustle. They are ready to sell chapatis. They are ready to sell sambusas. They are ready to to do anybody that work to make money. Mm. You're getting me? So th there is a problem, a big one. W what should they do to change that? It depends. W w what are their dreams? Many people don't have dreams. What is your dream? What do you want to be? <laughs> Studies always show that we continuously behave like the five friends we associate with. Who is your friend? Yes, I, I'm forgetting that scholar. He made a statement that five years from today you are going to be the, the books you read, the TV stations you watch, the blogs you follow. So the youth now watching UBC, which bloggers do you, do you follow? Which TV stations do you watch? Which newspapers do you read? Which radio station do you tune in? Who is your best friend? Mr. Gashomba, mm. you happen to be a father. I mentioned mm. that in my introduction. Mm. What are some of the, the goals mm. or what are some of the, uh, how can I explain it? What are some of, of the attributes? Mm. Yes, that's the right word to use. The attributes mm. that you have, you, that you have put on these children that you know, you're trying to raise. As a parent, your duty is simple to raise smart, intelligent, God-fearing children. That's your role. Make sure they go to good schools. Uh, the rest is theirs. Give them a foundation. It's like your father dying and he leaves you this building. Yes. If you sell it off, don't blame your father. He did what he's supposed to do. Give children good values, education. Mm -hmm. Education means going to good schools. You know, even the type of schools we go to sometimes decide who we are going to be. If you went to schools like Namagunga, Gayaza, King's College, there is a social constituency you grew up with. Mm. Chances are high that you are going to get a job because your, your OB or your OG, she's a human resource manager in Stanich at Barclays Bank or State House. Chances are that you are going to get a job. But you went, if you went through those fake secondary schools, chances are that you are going to fight like, like, like a tiger to survive. Mm. So if we pardon our duty is simple, raise responsible God citizens. Mm. That's it. God-fearing as well. Yes, the rest is theirs. Okay. Because when a 
when a boy or young girl clocks 18, the laws in Uganda protect him or her. What are you going to do? Are you going to, are you going to, go, going to get a hammer? But even what the, is important the laws is make in sure. the world, because living along Uganda, even the world. Is no, saying. actually, when uh, I was reading a book, students from Asia that go to Harvard University tend to excel at Harvard University. Why? Something in their mind always rings. I'm here to study. I'm here not to disappoint my, my parents. But our students go to Malaysia, go to India, go to China and start taking bungee. If you went to these bars in Kampala, you'd be shocked what these young boys or young girls do. <laughs> You're really asserting that. Eh? I know it. I know it because I interact with the students every day. I interact with the parents. I know what's happening in Uganda. And I'm, and I'm really disappointed the way our children are now. Because we want our children to be the best. They can only be the best by doing the best. Any last message mm. before we round up? Mm. Mm. Any to, last message? To the youth, you can be what you want to be. Never allow your history to determine your future because you hail from a poor family that you won't make it. Listen to your parents. Listen to your community leaders. Value education. Take it seriously. 20 years from today, they won't even ask you where you come from, but who are you? Mm. Consult. Don't consult your agents because they will misguide you. Consult people who are older than you. Don't go with the wind because there is this trend. To the rest of the team and uh, I, I would love to say have a good evening. And uh, remember to follow our social media outlets. Go on Chilling UBC TV, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Yeah, until next time with another great personality. Bye.